Oh, it's just, just a really quick one. Um, it sort of reminded me from a comment that somebody left, uh, sort of uh, mentioning that uh, when you actually add carbohydrates back in, your T3 levels restore. Well, obviously, it's a different type of metabolism, carbohydrate metabolism and better oxidation. They're not the same. Anyway, I've covered that in the other video. But it reminded me something that I'd actually forgotten about. Um, I was intending to make this video ages ago, but I, I completely and utterly forgot it. But for my dear and loving friends in the Ray Pete fan club, those special people that are dear to my heart, <gasps> I've got something to share with you. Anyway, let's start and check this out. Mm, gallstones. Mm, interesting stuff. Yeah. Okay. What are gallstones? Well, gallstones are lumps of solid material that form in our gallbladder. They are also called cholestasis. They are made when the digestive um, juices called bile turn hard and stone-like, like Ray Pete's heart. Well, he is uh, he's, he's six foot under at the moment. The gallbladder is a small organ under the liver. I hope you all know that. I'd be shocked if you didn't. It stores bile made by the liver. Bile is made of several things such as cholesterol, bile salts, uh, taurine being the best source to produce those bile so salts, and yellowish pigment, bilirubin. Anyway, I'm not going to go into the other stuff. It does remind us down here that, uh, you know, that uh, these sort of things can, uh, these gallstones can block tubes that, that carry, you know, the bile ducts that carry bile and uh, can lead to life-threatening infections of the bile ducts, the pancreas, or the liver. So they are a problem, you know. So if you have gallstones, they have the potential. They do carry with the with them certain level of risk. The word is risk, my dear Vagoons and Rapetians, risk. There are two types of gallstones, cholesterol and pigment ones. Now, we're not going to bother with the pigment ones, you know, so that's just Billy, primarily Billy Rubin consequence. Less common, dark colour, blah, blah, blah. These stones are the most common ones. The most common type of stone, often a yellow greenish color, made mainly of hardened cholesterol. That's when you've got less bile salts. Now, what actually produces bile salts? Obviously, it's taurine. And the other one, if you don't have enough taurine, is cysteine. So, again, if you're not eating sufficient protein, you're not going to get these things to produce sufficient bile. If you're not consuming fat, you're not going to produce sufficient bile. So what's going to happen? Well, you'll end up putting more cholesterol in there and hardening the stuff. This is why, you know, gall bladder issues now are endemic. I wonder why. What are people consuming? Oh, that's right. They're consuming carbo diets high in carbohydrates. Both, especially the vagoons, you know, the vegans and vegetarians. The sad dieters are now up to 70%. So same same bullshit issue. And, uh, you know, the repeats, obviously, they avoid fat like the plague um, uh, and primarily prioritise glucose. So, you know, that's going to have an issue, isn't it, boys and girls? It just has to have an issue. Now, what do we know? 
When you eat carbs, your T3 goes up, doesn't it, boys and girls? Oh, yes, it goes up. It's fantastic, according to Ray Pete. It's the next best thing compared to sliced bread. That's, that has carbs, so probably is, is similar. Let's just call it that. But if your T3 is low, you've got hypothyroidism, apparently. You know, let's ignore the different types of metabolism that are involved. Bit oxidation and, you know, the carb-centric approach of metabolism and through pyruvate dehydrogenase, the requirement for T3, not required through beta oxidation, boys and girls. So let's say, for some reason, the body was stupid, according to Ray Pete and his fan club. It was stupid. And whenever you went low carb, it, ne it only for the bad um, carnies did it actually lower it. Everybody else had kept it high. Well, they'd have a lot of problems, wouldn't they? And we've already talked about those, muscle wastage and everything else under the sun. What else does high T3 cause? You might wonder what. Let's just check this little study. Thyroid hormone differentially augments Billary sterol. Mm. Cholesterol. Ah! Shock horror. It's an old 90, 1992 study. Ooh, boy. So they injected into these little friggin' rats a whole lot of T3. A single dose of T3 injected produced 13-fold of bile cholesterol secretion through the, through the gallbladder. I wonder what that caused. Oh, that's right. It causes this problem. Gallstones. Oops. Ah, now it explains why we've got a, an explosion of gallbla gallbladder issues, which we never had in the 50s and 60s and 70s when we were consuming double the amount of animal foods that we are today and double the amount of animal fats as well. I mean, even, even the junk food companies like McDonald's, they were still using tallow up to the 19, um, uh, 1990s. So... There you go, boys, girls, and a threefold increase in phospholipids. Both initiated 12 hours after T3. Bile acid synthesis increased 50%. Neither, and this is the critical one, neither hypothyroidism or T3 treatment abolished diurnal rhythm of bile acid synthesis. So neither of them affected the synthesis of bile based on circadian rhythms. Actually, a lot of things follow circadian rhythms. Even a lot of the hormones um, follow circadian rhythms. You know, testosterone follows you know, and many other other hormones. The ignorance out there is endemic amongst people, you know. So that's the problem. And that's why people come up with all these reductionist, silly, ludicrous arguments. And the reason for that is because, one, they don't understand the system, how it interacts hormonally and all these other signaling molecules that take place. It's a complex interplay of things. And, uh, you know, reductionist nonsense leads you to complete and utter. And that's what reductionist nonsense did earlier, because people went and said, oh, most cholesterol stones are cholesterol stones. Oh, it must be the cholesterol you eat. No, it's not. 
because when you're on an animal-based diet, the amount of like um, taurine actually reduces cholesterol in the liver. Choline transports fats out of the liver. So what it does is choline and taurine reduce the amount of cholesterol going into the bile. And that only comes from animal foods. So when you actually look at a system, the gallbladder, with all the interactions with different types of molecules, foods, and signaling hormones, you get a completely different picture. But when you see things in a reductionist way, say, oh, there's the cholesterol in the actual, um, uh, in the gallbladder. Obviously, you're going to, it's like the, you know, the fireman at the fire ordeal as an example you know who's going to get accused the fireman is going to get accused not the person who lit the fire and in this case it was the carbs that caused this problem because they raised t3 and they and and also because you're not using it and you're produce and you're excreting due to higher t3 on a carb centric diet what are you doing? You're putting more and more cholesterol in there, and at the same time, because you're not putting fat into your body, you're not using it because you don't need it as much. You don't need as much bile. As a consequence, you end up with gallbladder problems. So when you see things in a more holistic way, you understand what the hell is going on. But when you see it in a reductionist way, you end up saying cholesterol there in the gallbladder, Cholesterol, the culprit. Simplistic nonsense. But that's how most of these things happen. Oh, calcium there, or, you know, even though it's actually stabilizing an atheroma, bad. Um, cholesterol there, oh, bad, even though it's trying to re repair and heal the endothelial damage. Ignoring completely the seed oils that come in and, uh, you know, that, have, uh, that are literally ripping and damaging the endothelium from the aldehydes and the primary and secondary oxidative products that are put in there that are creating all this inflammation. No, they're okay because they're produced by the food industry. The food industry says that they're fine and they pay off a whole lot of crackpot um, uh, academics to tell you that they are fine. Reductionism and deception go hand in hand. That's why educate them in a reductionist dumb way so they don't think outside the box. So they are compliant with the way we tell them what causes the problems. So, as you can see, however, bile acid synthesis was not stimulated by T3. Got it? The stimulation of bile synthesis is due to getting a message that fats are coming through. That boy just ate some fat, a fatty steak. That is what is going to tell you what it is. The only problem with this is and also for the cholesterol synthesis, it doesn't appear to um, uh, but Oops, let me just go back up. The key thing is that it has a stimulating effect. That's the thing. You know, 13-fold is massive. You know, we're not talking about like 50% or 20% or 30% or something like that. When you're looking at 13-fold, remember the, um, you know, the cancer studies and, uh, you know, because most epidemiological studies are like, you know, and this is not it. This is actually mechanistic studies, you know, experiments on rats. So it's actually high quality in comparison to the to the bullshit, um, uh, you know, epidemiological studies. Those ones are basically just looking at, uh, you know, like uh, an odds, you know, the sort of fifty percent, which is pretty much one point three. Sorry. 50, not 50 percent 70 percent and 20 percent and all that which is just one point um 17 or 1.2 or stuff like that it's nothing it's not even two so in epidemiology you need like like a 
a two, which would is it sort of equivalent like a like a twofold, like a double, you know, which is one hundred percent. That's just for hy hypothesis to get actually, you know, levels are from ten to thirty is what actually you could infer. Still, was not proving causation. You can infer. In this case, it's an experiment. This is thirteen fold increase. That's going to have problems. That's going to cause problems because it increases, you know, by injecting directly. This is an experiment. T3, they induced a 13-fold increase in bile cholesterol. Okay? This stuff. And the only thing that actually pushes it that high in the diet, um, when you're on a diet, not that high, but, you know, pushes it higher, is a carb-centric um, uh, sort of model or diet. Let me just shut that off. You know, you're not going to get that effect on a low-carb diet, any low-carb diet. A low-carb diet will have primarily good quality taurine-based, good quality, well-flowing, and oftenly utilised, so it's not sitting in there, so we're going to be utilised on a daily basis. Every day, you'll be using it on a, probably even multiple times if you're eating more fat through the day. And that's the difference. It's the carb-centric thing that's causing all the gallbladder issues, not any, not the cholesterol. And that is why, through reductionism, they've created an epidemic in gallbladder issues. Makes good money. Those surgical procedures. Anyway, take care. I hope you learned something about the dangers of reductionist thinking and enjoyed my humor as well. See you.